good morning all the centers this is suraj from telco crash technologies so today we'll be studying about the wireless communication and the network we'll be studying is 3g so we will be studying about 3g its architectures and its codes or i would like to say that wcdm so before starting let <coughs> एक बार को एक्सेप्ट ना करें तो कैसे लोग चाहते हैं कि मेरी टाइम लॉन्ग हो जाए तो कॉल करते हैं हाँ आपका तो वो शेयर हो गया आपको भी कर सकते हैं आज के शाम तक का सेशन आप ही देखेंगे लंच तक का आप स्टार्ट कर दो दो घंटे जा सकते हैं और आ जाएंगे ठीक है आपके पास तो क्लियर आ रहा है चलिए टेक्ट करके इसको पूरे टाइम में दोस्तों इसमें नहीं स्टोर कर दिया जाता है इसको नहीं करना so before starting with the 3g uh i would like to tell uh, ask you that what was the basic need why we opted for the 3g so could anyone tell me that why we opted for 3g because we were having a network 2g internet facility was provided by 2.5g and 2.75g then why we opted for 3g what was the basic or what was uh, so much dire need for this 3g which was given the so why we opted for 3g was that this generally if we see that without going into the technical terms just generally why 3g because 2g slow slow internet no video calls जो अच्छी वायरलेस कम्युनिकेशन वाला चल रहा है वो नो लाइव स्ट्रीमिंग नो बफरिंग
no buffering or I will say there was buffering. Voice calls. over the internet was very poor. So these were basically the general things or basically I would say that these were the basic disadvantages of the 2G network. Though 2G was good, we were having a good communication or long distance communication. We could uh, talk to a person sitting 100 or 1000 kilometers away from ourselves. But some uh, some advantages like internet facilities, but we were not having the real such experience of the internet. No such fast downloading, uh, no such up fast uploading, no video calls. Plus if we want to see any video over a YouTube, uh, it would take very long time uh, that is called buffering. So it was a very slow connection. The voice call for in, in the uh, region or in the domain of voice calls, 2G is the best. In the domain of voice calls, 2G was the best technology that was used. And still it is being used. So, <clears throat> so these were the general disadvantages of the 2G network. Uh, so due to which uh, we came to 3G or we opted for the next generation that is third generation or the 3G technology. Now let us technically compare the 2G and 3G. These were the basically the general advantage uh, disadvantages of the 2G network or I would say the common people or a, a person who is not having a knowledge about the technical terms of the network. He would say these are the basic disadvantages of the 2G network. That is why we opted for 3G. But if we look technically as we are the engineers and we are uh, having the knowledge about this domain of the networks. so. Technically, what were the basic differences or the, I would say, the what was the comparison? So, First was the frequency band. For 2G, I told we told I told you that 2G in India is using two bands. Basically, they that are 900 megahertz band and 1800 megahertz band, having their respective uplink and downlink. For 2G. For the band of 900 in case of 2G, it is having uplink and downlink as follows. Uplink was 890 to 950 megahertz and downlink. 935 to 960 megahertz this was about 900 megahertz band in case of 2g now by looking at the bands or by looking at the uplink and downlink frequencies of the 900 megahertz we came to know that what is the bandwidth what is the bandwidth what is the bandwidth
what is the bandwidth between these bands or what is the bandwidth of both uplink and downlink of the 900 megahertz band so what is a bandwidth bandwidth is basically the width of the band or the difference between the uplink and downlink of the band band is the frequency or with uh, or the frequency on which our network is operating so if if our network is at uh, the uploading frequency or our network is operating on 890 to 915 then this bandwidth is equal to 25 megahertz and <clears throat> similarly for the downlink that is 935 to 960 this bandwidth is also 25 megahertz now in case of 2g we were having a channel spacing in case of 2g we were having a channel spacing channel spacing is that uh, between two frequencies between two frequencies there was a gap of 200 kilohertz between two frequencies say if the frequencies is uh, uh, we all know that uh, we the first generation network or the 1g was analog and 2g was digital because it uh, digitally it was made uh, it was uh, used by uh, it was made by using that tdma and fdma concept and by applying the tdma and fdma concept we came to know that the frequencies were divided like 892 to 891 having channel spacing of 200 kilohertz such that it is 890 point 0 890.2 890.4 890.6 890.8 and similarly 891.0 this there was this was the channel spacing between the two frequencies channel spacing was of 200 kilohertz or we could say 0.2 megahertz this channel spacing was introduced or was mainly because to because of avoiding the interference between the two frequencies because if the two frequencies say this so say if the 890.0 and 890. Two is not having a channel spacing of minimum of 200 kilohertz or 0.2 megahertz then they would interfere with each other and their signal would uh, signal would get mixed and there would be no proper voice calling no proper or there would be no where there would be no calling because the signal would get mixed totally interfere with each other and the uh, mobile handset or the user won't catch any frequency if it if he or she is located to the tower having such frequency near to it so this was the this was the channel spacing in the 890 or the uploading frequency and we were having the bandwidth of 25 megahertz so if we say there was uh, 890 to 891 there is channel spacing of 200 kilowatts and we are getting a total of five frequencies eight nine a total of five frequencies between 890 to 891 <laughs> similarly if we calculate for the whole band similarly if we calculate for the whole band having the bandwidth of 25 megahertz and channel spacing of 200 kilohertz then total these total number of frequencies total frequencies we get are 25 into 5 because each of the frequencies between 890 to 891 we are getting 5 so 25 into 5 equal to 125 frequencies 
and this 125 frequencies were called ARFCNs. These are called ARFCN in case of 2G. This was the case of 2G. ARFCN, which is called adequate radio frequency channel number basically these are the what these 125 frequencies are the ARFCN which are which are network of the operators by uh, firstly there is the option of the 900 megahertz band and after that there is option for these frequencies and various operators like idea vodafone uh, Reliance, Airtel, BSN, all of these come during the auction and they buy these particular frequencies. And uh, uh, these frequencies are also very costly. It is not uh, possible that a single network could buy all these frequencies. So different different frequencies, say uh, say 40 frequencies, any 40 frequencies are bought by Airtel, next any. 40 are bought by bsnl and similarly 10 by the idea and so and these frequencies uh and these are the frequencies which are put in our bts or the towers these are the frequencies on which our towers operate so this was the case of the 2g if we compare uh, regarding the frequency bands Similarly, for the case of 1800 band, 1800 band in case of 2G, it was having uplink and downlink as 1710 to 1700, 1710 to 1700. 85 uplink downlink as 1805 to 1880 so he, here we were having a bandwidth of 75 megahertz bandwidth and if we again calculate by looking at the channel spacing which was 200 kilohertz or 0.2 megahertz then in case of this in case of this band arfcn were Seventy five into five that is three seventy five so these so these were the ARFCNs or the adequate radio frequency channel numbers which we got in case of eighteen hundred megahertz band. Now coming to in comparison with the 3G, we are having frequency band of 3G is twenty one hundred megahertz, and this twenty one hundred is again having its uplink and downlink uplink and downlink uplink is 1920 to 1980 and downlink is 2110 to 2170 
here bandwidth we are having of 60 megahertz because bandwidth is basically again the width of the band or the difference between the up di difference between the both uplink frequencies and the downlink frequencies of the uplink frequencies so bandwidth is 60 megahertz and initially or in case of 2g the channel spacing was 200 kilohertz or 0.2 megahertz but in, here in case of 3g channel spacing is 5 megahertz so ar fcn r 60 divided by 5 that is 12 so we were having now 12 arfcns in case of 3g we don't call them arfcns they are called U A R F C N in 3G and this U means U M T S. You might have heard about the word U M T S in case of 3G. Just like G S M is used for 2G, U M T S is used for 3G, which means universal. Mobile Telecommunication Services UMTS Universal Mobile Telecommunication Services. Uh, this UMTS was uh, UMTS was derived after we get the standards from the 3GPP. Uh, 3GPP is basically third generation partnership project. 3GPP is the main body which gives us the standards of how on how much frequency a 3G is to operate it or what should be the minimum and the maximum uh, speed of the 3G. So these all are the standards which and these standards, the fixed standards are uh, given us by 3gpp and these standards for the 3gpp this was uh, like uh, if i say the standard was that uh, we should mean have a minimum speed of 2 mbps in case of 3g and this standard or this speed was derived by umts therefore we we call these arfcns are as uarfcns Secondly, second feature or in comparison between the 2G and 3G is that in 2G we have TDMA plus FDMA concept. What was in TDMA and FDMA concept that if we have a frequency over here 
and time over here that For a particular frequency, we were having a time slot. Or a frame. This was the case of the two G. In three G, we are having a three dimensional graph <laughs> though we are having these two coordinates that is time and frequency but additional to these coordinates we are having power plus codes so This is the main difference. This is the main difference between 2G and 3G. Power plus the codes. We are, again we have also these frames in here power plus codes why we are having the three uh, these three dimensional structure because uh, for 3g we are having the three main advantages that is for uh, we require 3g for voice calling data plus for the video calling in case of 2g there was no video calling we were having voice calling plus the data facility but to cope up or the, the uh, but to cope up with the rising demand for the video calling 3g was invented and in 3g we are having these three main factors and the different different uh, uh, different different speeds or the different different factors or the standards are fixed for this voice video or data services that is we are having here voice video and data plus if I if we say that our time and frequency is same at one time then our power and codes would be different if power and codes plus the frequency is same at one time then our time time would be different if the power and codes plus the time is the same then our frequency would be different let if in one case our power, time and frequency, all the three are same, then the codes would be different. Likewise, I told you. If we say that. If time and frequency are same then power and codes are different similarly if frequency and power or codes are the same then time is different and so on plus if in one case uh, if in one case time frequency power 
आर द सेम देन आर कोड्स वुड बी डिफरेंट these codes are mainly responsible for a various speeds for the voice calling for a data features uh, internet or internet feature or for video calling we'll be studying it further on so this was the main difference or the second comparison and the comparison was made on the basis of the time and frequency function in 2g and time frequency and power and codes feature in case of 3g next this third feature next the third feature or the third comparison between 2g and 3g was that frames in case of 2g we were having a tdma frame tdma frame having eight time slots and tdma frame is that time division multiple access frame which we got in case of tdma and eight time slots and in each time slot there was one user and one time slot equal to one user it was like that zero one two three four five six seven this is a one tdma frame and eight time slots equal to eight users eight time slots is equal to eight users so at one time if at one time in case of 2g if we are having one one tdma frame then at, at a one time eight users can share that time uh, can share that tdma from or eight users can call but in case of 3g as we need three three facilities like voice video and data for in case of 3g we were we are having in 3g we are having a radio frame radio frame and that radio frame is made up of 15 time slots this radio frame is made up of 15 time slots Fifteen time slots. This radio frame plus uh, as we require the main three features for this three G that is voice, video, and data. So this one frame is equal to one user. This whole frame is shared by only one user. This whole frame is shared by one user. plus in 2g duration of one frame is 4.615 millisecond and in case of 3g this duration of one frame equal to 
10 milliseconds. So only one, uh, this whole frame was shared by one user. If we, uh, if we want to call, if we want to uh, use our data or video services, whenever, uh, whenever we make a request to the network, we, the user get whole of this frame, whole of this radio frame. That is one user get one whole radio frame to perform its activities under the 3G network. In case of, but whereas in the case of 2G, uh, one particular user get one particular time slot from one TDMA frame. That is why from uh, that TDMA frame was having eight time slots and eight users could, eight user could use this time slots at a simultaneous uh, one uh, simultaneously. So this was the third comparison or third feature of the 3G in comparison to the 2G network. Now, fourth feature, fourth feature or the fourth comparison between 2G and 3G network was based upon FDD. In case of 2G, we were only having FDD, that is frequency duplex, frequency division duplexing and in case of 3G we are having both FDD and TDD. What is it FDD? Suppose we are having one road it is divided but initially what is that in case of 2G that if we are moving from this direction and we have to come back, then firstly, we will go from this direction. And afterwards, we, when we have completed our whole distance, then we will be coming back and that from that direction. <coughs> that is at one time, firstly, we, uh, we could do only uploading and at another time we could do downloading but simultaneously we can't do the both the things that was the main uh, that was the disadvantage but we can't say it was a disadvantage that was a slow feature of 2g but in case of 3g we are having fdd and tdd that is frequency division duplexing and time division du duplexing and by combining both of these, what we are having that if we are having one road or one, we are going to one way, we could go simultaneously and we could come simultaneously from the path we are com coming or going initially. If we look like from the uploading and downloading only here, We could do uploading at only one time. And downloading another time, not this simultaneously. But in case of 3G, we are having this special feature of uploading and downloading. So we could use this simultaneously because of the concept of tdd there is the role of ftd but by playing but when both uh, ftd and tdd are uh, combined it becomes a <coughs> good feature for the 3g now the last or the most important feature was or is the most important feature is channel coding. Now this channel coding, what is channel coding? Channel coding is 
providing security to our data providing security to our data whether it is voice video or internet facility so that if any of the one hacker or some other or the third person tries to track our data he would not be able to track it because of the this function of channel coding in case of in 2g there is no channel coding but in 3g we are having this channel coding now channel coding it is measured or defined by coding rate channel coding it is defined by coding rate that is cr now coding rate is having a range coding rate is having a range coding rate lies between 0 to 1 range of coding rate Now what is this coding rate? Coding rate is basically nothing but our data. That is what we are speaking, what we are using, uh, we are uh, making a voice call and if we are saying someone a hello, that is our data. And this coding rate is our data. Coding rate, it is called, uh, it is equal to our data. Now, let's take an example. Suppose, coding rate equal to 1 by 2 then as I told you data equal to 1 by 2 because data is equal to coding rate and now this coding rate now if we want to find out the security how much of the security is added out of this data then security equal to 1 minus 1 by 2 that is 1 by 2 <clears throat> so if we are sending data 1 by 2 or if we say if we are having a data of 50 percent then 50 percent is the security added on it if there is any doubt, anyone can ask me. If there is any doubt in this, so anyone of you can ask me. Yes, sir. Is there any doubt? Thank <laughs> you. Uh, good morning. Yes, sir. So, can you please repeat this concept? Okay, okay. Thank you. 
So as I told you that the last feature or the comparison between 2G and 3G was that 3G is having the main feature of channel coding and channel coding is defined by coding rate. So coding rate, coding rate is basically our data. Coding rate is equal to the data. Data means if you are using a, if you are on a voice call and if we uh, and if you say hello, then hello is your data. It is not like that uh, network is sending hello. Uh, though the receiver is listening to the word hello, but the process or how the hello is going to or the hello is going to the receiver phone, it is where it is through the security and that security is provided through this coding rate and this coding rate, this coding rate it is having a range of range equal to 0 to 1 like coding rate lies between 0 to 1 it can be equal to or greater than 0 it can be equal to or smaller than 1 and this coding rate is equal to a data and the maximum value of this coding rate is one and we have to find the how much of this security is added this security is basically added uh, security is basically added or provided by adding the redundant bits redundant bits are like extra bits suppose if i'm sending if i'm sending a data of suppose if i'm sending data 111 then to provide if we are sending 111 then to provide security some extra bits are added see uh, suppose some extra bits are added in front like 111 or we can say if uh, sometimes the extra bits can be added into the last uh, just this example is a bit uh, similar that's why we can't distinguish but if we take another example suppose 1001 then if we want to provide security then how the security will be added we will provide either extra bits in front like 11101 or at the end 100111 we could use 1100 bit uh, bits we have to be we have to add and that redundant or the extra bits redundant means the extra bits that bits can be added either in front or either at the end but not in between the original data because we don't want to disturb the original data we can make it feel like anything we can pretend like because if the hacker or the third person whosoever wants to get our data he will be getting this he will be getting this or this but our original data is this he will never get this he will be finding only this and he will be happy in getting that that i have uh, finally tracked someone but that is nothing because he will never uh, know what the original data was so this was the redundant bits so that i was telling you that coding rate is basically equal to our data how much of the data is how much of the data we are sending so now uh, let us take an example suppose coding rate is equal to 3 by 4 coding rate is equal to 3 by 4 now we know if coding rate is equal to 3 by 4 then our data it is also equal to 3 by 4 because data is equal to coding rate and now maximum value it is like coding rate plus security it is equal to 1 coding rate plus security is equal to 1 now our coding rate is 3 by 4 plus 
security equal to one. No. Security equal to one minus three by four. That is one by four. So I hope now it's clear. Still any doubt? Any one of you can ask me now. Still any doubt? Please on your mic. Hello. Hello. Uh, sir, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hello. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, the formula which you have written, the example which you have given, does that mean that when we are sending in this example, we'll be sending three bits of data with one bit of security in it? Is it like See. that? Only? Yes, ma'am. When we are sending two bits, we are sending three bits data and one bit security bit. Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Thank okay. You. So. Let us take an, another example. Let coding rate is equal to four by three. Then data is equal to four by three. Security equal to Now, can anyone of you tell me what's the answer to this example? Any query from the center? No, no. So now, can anyone of you tell me what would be the answer? How much is the security? Anyone? Hello. Hello. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, this is Vishaljan from Pike. Yes, sir. But, uh, in this case, coding rate is greater than one. Yes, sir. That so was the basically possible to find out security. Yes, sir. You are exactly right. Thank you, sir. Yeah. In this case, coding rate is equal to four by three, which is greater than one. So this is a wrong case and in this case we will be having no security so thank you sir you answered great <clears throat> so these were the features or basically the comparison between the 2g and 3g network in in term of technical terms Now we'll be studying about the architecture of 3G. Three G architecture. Before going to the 3G architecture, uh, let us recall the 2G architecture. What was in 2G? In case of 2G, we were having a mobile station which sends signal to the BTS, base transceiving station. And from then, signal goes to the BSC and in last the MSC performs the actions grants permission having other bodies like HLR VLR 
centers like AUC, EIR, so this. Similarly, we are having in case of 3G. These were combinedly called BSS, base station subsystem. In 3G, what is that? Mobile station is called user equipment. What is BTS called? BTS is called a node B. This BS is called RNC and in case of MSC we are having core networks and just like these are called BSS this node B and RNC are combinedly called RAN radio access network what is this UE user equipment that is a mobile phone the uh, it is not a simple mobile phone in case of 3G it must be 3G enabled mobile phone because a 2G enabled mobile phone can't access the 3G network because for accessing the 3G network our phone should have a feature of 3G enabled node B or it is node BTS but in case we use the word node B only RNC it is called radio network controller these are the core networks this core networks again have same functions just like HLR VLR AUC EIR So now we will be studying these parts one by one. So first, first part of architecture was or uh, user equipment. So now will anyone of you tell me that what comes in user equipment? What's the main thing required for the user equipment in case of 3G? Anyone from the center? Can anyone of you tell me that what is the main thing required for the user equipment? You can take it from the 2G networks mobile station. Hello. 
हेलो हेलो यस सर यस सर ये अभी बात की थी रिलेवेंट मोबाइल फोन यस सर 3G एनेबल्ड मोबाइल फोन बट वन मोर थिंग इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर द यूजर इक्विपमेंट कैन यू टेल मी दैट सर लेट्स सी दिस 3G सी यस सर 3G सी बेसिकली यूजर इक्विपमेंट इज कंपोज्ड ऑफ मोबाइल फोन प्लस सिम This mobile phone is composed of SIM. It should be 3G enabled. What are the now? We will be studying the functions of our mobile phone or our equipment. now our mobile phone is having features like power level measurement this power level measurement is the power which we are getting from the bts or in terms of 3g the power which we are getting from node b so if the user is away from a node b he or she requires more power so that it would remain in its region or it could catch signal from that node b if plus if the if the user is standing near to the node b then low power is required because every time if we are getting a if, if we are giving a very much high power to the user it is also very harmful because these power of or the signals are having very adverse effects on the human body so power level measurement is done by the mobile phone that is the power if the the power level total power is 43 dbm which a node b or bts in case of 2g we call bts but in case of 3g we call them node b so this power is again the same that is 43 dbm and uh, the function of our mobile is it's the function of our mobile is the it's the function of our mobile to get to receive the power high or low whether it is standing away from the node b it would catch signal highly and if the he or uh, the user is standing near to the <coughs> node b it would catch signal very slow uh, it would, would catch signal with a low power because mm -hmm. he because the mobile knows that there is no need of high power in standing nearer to the node b so power level measurement next feature is transmission transmission means sending now what we have to send we have to send the signals or we uh, basically the measurement report i hope you all know that we are, our mobile phone is sending a measurement report to the network after every 480 milliseconds whether it is in 3g network whether it is in 2g network or whether it is in 4g network so power level measurement this transmission and this transmission uh, this transmission of the signal is done with the help of the antennas a mobile phone is having the antennas uh, antennas in built in it and the mobile phone sends the signal and the sig these signals are received by the antennas over the node b just like rf antennas <clears throat> so transmission next feature is imei imei number imei number stands for international mobile equipment identity international mobile equipment 
identity. Now, this IMEI, it is of 15 digits. Basically, this IMEI number is used because it is very helpful in case of tracking. If our phone is lost, plus if we are plus sometimes uh, our, our phone is not receiving a proper signal, then in case our network catches the mobile phone and sees if the uh, our mobile phone is having the problem or our SIM is having the problem. And for such cases, our IMEI numbers are used by the network. So this 15 digit IMEI number is composed of, composed of three things. This is called type allocation code. This is called frequency assembly code and SN is the serial number. Type allocation code is of seven digits. Frequency assembly code is of two, digit, two digits. And this serial number is of six plus two plus six. Seven. Six plus two plus seven. Seven. Seven plus two sixteen. Six plus two. Okay. Actually, this type allocation code is of six digits. Frequency assembly code is of two digits. And the serial number is of seven digits. So if we add this six plus two plus seven, it is of 15 digits. There is a fact or there is a <clears throat> point I would like to tell you that if if anyone's phone FAC that is frequency assembly code is zero zero, then that phone is building. 2000 to 2004 basically these are the uh, mobile phones that uh, that were mainly developed or built by uh, manufactured by nokia nokia mobile phones were there so if uh, anyone is having a uh, nokia mobile phone of 2000 and 2004 if you would check their imei number their their seventh and eight digit would be zero zero that is their frequency uh, Frequency assembly code would be zero zero. Okay.